Hello everybody, Clint Seely here. Um, I want to bring you another short tutorial on the toolbox under the edit menu right here. Okay, and in this tutorial what I want to talk about or present to you is the add and remove stitch angles. Now as you can see over here the toolbox, most of everything in the toolbox under the edit is grayed out. We of course have to um, select an object before some of these options start showing up. Okay, as I click on options, you can see I've clicked on this ellipse, and now the add stitch angles and the remove stitch angles, both of those options are highlighted to where we can now select and use use those. So let me explain exactly um, why you would use the add stitch angles and the remove stitch angles, and how they can make your designs better. In a situation like this where you're going to utilize those two uh, features and get the most benefit out of them is when you digitize an object, maybe um, something like my digitizing, one of my digitizing elements here. This is one of them from the Ocean Collection, okay? Um, and so is this one here, this sand dollar. When you digitize something <clears throat> from the art canvas and you convert it to embroidery, the, the program does a really good job of guessing what type of stitch you want, and it, it really just guesses at what the stitch angle needs to be. Now, you have, auto digitizing is great, but remember, you're still digitizing. You're going to have to take some manual control here. So the program only gets you so far, and then you can use the tools like add and remove stitch angles to really make your embroidery pop. I'm going to zoom in here and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So we're going to zoom in on this shell here. That way we can get a better idea. Okay. So as we zoom in, you can see all of the elements of this little scallop shell have been auto-digitized as a satin stitch. <clears throat> but the program has just kind of guessed, as far as the individual elements go, the program has guessed at what angle to make the stitch. If I look at it this way, you're going to see most everything has been digitized at a 45 degree angle. Now, as elements curve and loop back around, you may want the stitch angle to change along the contour of that element like this one here. You can see a couple of these I have already changed the stitch angle on. Like, hold on, let me show you this one right here. As I go to add stitch angles, you're going to see that I have added some stitch angles already. That's why this part of the element looks so good. If I, if I, uh, let's see, if I remove those stitch angles, you can see everything goes back to kind of a 45 degree angle. So as I want to make my satin stitch flow and look as good as I possibly can make it look. All right, let's look at this guy here. You see, this is following just like a 45 degree angle. I want to really make that look. See those jagged edges right there? I want to make this portion of the design. I'm going to make all the rest of them as well, but I'm going to focus on this portion of the design. I'm going to add stitch angles to really make that thing pop. So let's left click on the element and you can see we can now add stitch angles. If you left click add stitch angles we're gonna then click these angles into place kinda like the runs on a ladder. Okay, I'll need to left click here find visually how I want that angle to be. See, like that. Okay, and we'll just click here and as it starts to curve around a little you can see how I'm changing the degree angle a little bit so that stitch angle will flow and just really look nice it'll look great it'll pop so now I've added my stitch angles and I'm just waiting to press the enter key on the keyboard watch when I press enter watch how the stitch angle changes boom now look can you see how different that is, how much cleaner, how nicer that is going to look. Let me zoom out on this, compare it to the other elements that have not been changed. 
So let me go through. I'm going to go through a little quick, quicker and, and individually change these manually myself. I'm going to just add the stitch angles. I've done, oops, sorry about that. Boo, doo, doo. I have, uh, I'll move along a little bit quicker. I have a lot of experience at this, so I'm just going through and changing these dudes individually one at a time. This is something that you could do as well. After you've played with this Add Stitch Angles tool a little bit, you're going to be very proficient at it. You'll get very good at it. Now you can see how this, this design that looked pretty good before looks much, much better when we manually go in and we add these stitch angles. Let's see. Did I already do this one? No. This one's pretty straightforward. Yeah, th see, these are looking much better. Much better. Let's add some stitch angles. Boom. Let's add some stitch angles. Now the remove, all you're going to do as far as remove stitch angles goes, say you go through one of these and you add stitch angles and you're not happy with the way that it looks. And you want to remove the stitch angles and start all over. That's what the remove is for. See here, I can say, oh, I'm not exactly happy with how I digitize the stitch angles on this element. I'm just going to remove them. See how it goes back to the original. And then I'm going to left click add stitch angles and you would just start all over again. So you can really use this feature, the add and remove stitch angles, to really take full control of those satin stitch elements to make those, to make that design real clean and make it really pop, giving it a nice texture and 3D effect popping off of your garment. Well, that's it for add and remove stitch angles. This is Clint Seely. Thank you for watching.